I'd like to say sincerely from the bottom of my heart that I am truly honoured, I'm very privileged to actually be here. I want this to, to, to get to each and every one of you. Let me say that I'm very excited also to be able to share something about which I'm very passionate. Dr Manny Petirakis joined the team in Juni to help with the workshops. Manny is the owner of the Art Shed in Brisbane, the largest retail outlet for art supplies in the city. Manny is a passionate artist and a teacher himself and runs many workshops at his store. When Manny heard that we were going to the jail to teach the guys, he jumped on board immediately. He realised that if this could help one group of men in jail, then maybe it could help them all in the end. And Manny's philosophy is that he would rather prescribe creativity instead of medication to help people through their lives. He begins his session by teaching watercolour techniques with acrylics. True to watercolour technique, I thin it a little bit as I go down. If you let watercolour do its own thing, it will kind of paint itself. The secret to getting what you want is to learn how wet the paper is, how loaded your brush is with water and pigment. That way you'll learn how to control the effects. For instance, if you put watercolour paint on dry paper, you get very sharp lines, very like any paint. Whereas if you wet the paper first, like this is wet now, and I put a line of dark pigment on that, it kind of goes bleh into the water. So if you want soft edges, that's how you do them. And it does it automatically in watercolour. So I'll show you. So that's wet down here. See how it's kind of softening the edges a little bit? If I did that on dry paper, it's much sharper. So that's, that's one key little exercise to practice. Who knows what a glaze is? Okay, a glaze is just a very diluted thin layer of colour and in acrylics when you make a glaze with water or the mediums what you're creating is like a sheet of cellophane and putting it over the top. Now I'm thinking I don't mind that but I'd like an even redder appearance to the whole painting so I might make a very thin glaze I'm just going to do one half first to show you the difference. So you see how I've warmed up this half of the painting? I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that's good, I want that. I can do it to the whole painting. So that's a glaze. And I haven't disrupted the underneath layers too much because they're already dry. Whereas if I did that much rubbing over a watercolour painting, I would mess it up and muddy it up a little bit. So there's an even more warm, warm little sum. Uh, landscape. You can go four or five, six layers of acrylic glazes and enrich your painting. Now in this sequence Manny begins to explain how to create an abstract work by starting with some basic pictures. He uses information that he has taken from one of the Australian art review magazines that have been supplied to the jail. He begins initially by using various tonal effects with charcoal, explaining to the men that the tones, even if they are just in shades, are still important in the makeup of the finished piece. He had already prepared a canvas with a basic wash over the top, using the Chroma interactive colours and his drawing, and depending on how detailed you get. I personally think it is always a great idea to prepare a drawing so that you can at least see your tones and source of light before you start. Manny then begins to map out his abstract by using paint directly from the tubes. Once he has his basic structure down he uses a piece of rag and some titanium white to bring out various areas of the painting. In the end an abstract piece that is defined and structured and doesn't look too bad for a painting that was done in very little time. There you go, painting finished three cheap colours, the student colours will work just as well as the professional colours with this on just about any surface. It teaches you a hell of a lot about colours because you mix the colours and as you play with them on the, on the canvas you actually see what you come up with. Uh, you know you mix this colour with, ah oh, I can see that and I can see that and you're learning the whole way. It's a ball of fun. Um, I hope maybe one day we can do this again and I can share some more info. I hope it's been enjoyable. I'm sorry you haven't had a chance to have a go. If we have time later, happy to guide you through this again, but I'm pretty sure this sort of a, a thing you can do yourselves pretty easily. Anyway, I hope that makes a bit of a difference for you fellas. Thank you. Okay, money. Sensational stuff, bud. Well, personally, I've, I've certainly felt that I had a creative side somewhere um, and now I've had the opportunity to express that and very happily so. And I think just looking around, you'll see that um, we've all become pretty, pretty well creative. 
let's say we, we've created a lot of very fine things that we find enjoyment from. It was a bit like Christmas when the inmates got the chance to put some paint on their pallets. Obviously not having huge access to materials, the large pots of chroma paint were scooped up with their plastic spoons with great gusto and enthusiasm. It's amazing as such a simple thing as mixing a pallet of paint has enabled these men to get to know each other and themselves a little better. Firstly I just wanted to say when I walked in here it was just amazing. When we walked in, I noticed the big welcome 3D artwork the men had created at the entrance to the hall, which is very similar to the chalk pavement art that I do around the country. What I decided to show the inmates on that day was how to go about the process of painting a canvas, from sketching ideas, painting backgrounds, applying the design to the canvas, then building the layers of acrylics to complete the artworks. I talked about experimenting with different elements and colours that personally connected with them, and how they could go about constructing an idea for their art. Being able to freely express the way it develops without constraining or feeling doubtful about their abilities. Being open to learning from other artists and not being afraid to try different techniques is a wonderful way of finding your own talents and becoming a confident artist. It was so exciting to see the enthusiasm and joy within the room. I hope this class can inspire the guys to practice their skills and create artworks that will not only build their confidence, but show others what they can give back to the community. Even if you're starting without an idea of what you're actually going to paint, this is a really good exercise to just get your mind thinking about what it could be. Beautiful. Basically that was the sketch that I did. You can see, you know, I've put in sort of my shaded areas, um, how I, it, it's black and white at this stage. I hadn't really thought about what colours that I'd use, but I'd like it to, to work with the background that I've got. And obviously I have, like in these ones, I have very, very similar colours but then I like to throw in a colour that's basically much brighter and contrasting. So if I can just sort of show you. The white lines are really good to sketch with. I don't know if you have access to the white pencils. The paint's just going to go straight over the top of it anyway, so it's really just a guide. Chroma Paints kindly donated all of the paint that was used and also sent spray bottles and information to the inmates on the use of their interactive acrylic colours. Create Art in your Monday Queensland also sent down 80 artist quality canvases for the guys to work on. An Australian Art Review made available a number of their art magazines for the men to study other art forms while they are in the jail. There were many, many more inmates that wanted to take part in the workshop, but only 25 of them were chosen to be a part of the special day of education and creativity. And another thing, um, with my chalk art that I used to do or still do with um, on the pavement uh, the oil in the finger in the fingers is actually really good with chalk and it seems to be the only thing that um, works as well as it does on the pavement on the concrete because most of the time I'm doing it on the pavement and it's um, an artwork that d doesn't last basically the, r the rain and the the elements will uh, wash it away within a week um, uh, so it's not permanent, but I've tried using rubbers and gloves uh, and paint brushes, but the oil in the fingers is actually really good for blending chalk. The guys placed their finished backgrounds around the room so they could dry off. Then off we went to rearrange the room in preparation for the watercolour demonstration I was going to show them. I had already mapped out my drawing with a HB pencil so I could see exactly where my water wash should go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run my line across the top. Can you see how that's actually starting to come down now? Yeah. Okay, that's my dark colour. I've lifted, did you see what I did when I lift the brush? I lifted the brush so that the actual pigment stays in the brush. A bit more white in there. 
So what I want to do is lighten it off now. Just put a touch of more colour in there. Really sort of give it some atmosphere. And can you see that now? See what it's doing? More water. Because now I just want it to slowly make its way down. Now we're going to go to our buildings. But remembering I'm trying to create an atmosphere at the back. Like so. I'll bring it to the edge. And then just let it bring itself down. And can you see those really soft edges on the building now? As though it's in the distance. Skyscraper. Now from here, after putting down the building wash, I use the back of my fingernail to push the paint aside and slightly scour the wet paper. Next, the rest of the background while the paper remains wet. I picked up my various colours, remembering that I had mixed a few washes in my palette tray beforehand. Using the brush more aggressively, I apply a darker shade of colour as the perspective of the colour comes forward as well. The guys were incredibly engrossed with the techniques that I was showing them that day. Once again, using a much more aggressive technique, I laid down the paint with washes that had been more loaded than previously. Allowing the paper to dry slightly, I then went back and completed the left side of my skyline and then proceeded to block in around my tram and motor vehicles. Using the spray bottle to re-wet the paper, I once again used the back of my finger to mark in the details. Just wondering, Graeme, do you find that there's a, like a memory in the paper of the motion of, your, of the actual tip of the brush? Yeah, yeah, after a while, I mean, it's just simply a matter of doing it enough so that you understand. I mean, obviously, sort of just trying to cop what, copy what Joe's doing out of my head and then him obviously working off a photo that he had, you know, you've got a much better uh, perception of where you're going with it. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, having huge amounts of detail in it. It's a matter of creating an impression there. Using a smaller brush, I start to outline my cars and background and street information. It is important to understand that this was only a demonstration that I put together in an hour, whereas the day we filmed Joseph, the filming took most of the day and he had much more time to outline his technique. Remembering part of the key elements of watercolour painting is controlling your washes and timing. This last bit was using a very wet area to run the colour down to complete the shadows and the wetness of the road. Overall, I ended up with a good example of what it takes to put a basic watercolour picture together. With the amount of water you use on this, for your original sketch, are you using just a normal clay graphite type of pencil? I just used a HB. A HB. Yeah, you don't want to use, you don't want to use anything like charcoal at all. HB is a nice solid pencil, anything that goes beyond that, it gets too graphite -y and it'll and it can bleed into your painting. I mean, it's not a, an important part, particularly with watercolours like this.